if you've ever presented before, perhaps by using a PowerPoint presentation at a business meeting, If you've ever presented before, perhaps by using PowerPoint at a presentation, a business meeting, you know the challenge is partly to get the PowerPoint to display on the screen. All sorts of technical things you have to do, and you're kind of swearing over it and hoping everything goes right, and in your head you're thinking, ah, oh, let's do it, PowerPoint, got to make everything work. But even once you get that PowerPoint working, or that presentation working, and your beautiful words, your beautiful presentation starts to show up on that screen, there's still something very important that you need to do when presenting. And it's something that is simple to do, but many speakers don't do it. And maybe you've seen those speakers where it's just something, you just somehow the speaker doesn't keep your attention. You're not quite sure what it is, but you notice somehow the way they're going up about there, the way they're moving about up there, it just doesn't keep your attention. And they can get pretty boring. In fact, sometimes people even turn the lights out in PowerPoint presentations. And that's almost an invitation for the whole audience to take a nap. Because it's that dull. And that happens because there's something not happening up there on the stage. It's just not, not quite working. But the thing is, it doesn't need to be that way. And if you've ever seen a good presentation, good PowerPoint presentation, you know there's something going on. Maybe you don't know what it is, but somehow they're able to keep your attention. Somehow, all the way through that, you're able to kind of focus on, understand what they're talking about, and it all just kind of comes together up there with the PowerPoint going on. Somehow you think, oh yeah, okay, I get this. I get where this is going, I know what this guy's talking about, I know what this girl's talking about. And all the way through, and even at times when you think maybe I'll just take a quick phone call, or maybe I'll do a little texting here, somehow you don't seem to get that opportunity. There's something special they're doing that doesn't give the opportunity to take that quick text or that quick phone call, and you find yourself, regardless of how busy you are, actually watching through that entire presentation beginning to end, and maybe thinking, you know, yeah, there's, it was okay. There's something there. And even if it wasn't the greatest presentation, at the end you still feel like, all right, I gave it a chance, it gave me a chance, I gave it a chance, okay, I, I know what happened. And as you know, that can be kind of a big deal, because some presentations you finish it and you have no clue what happened. So we can start quizzing the presentation afterwards. You're like, eh, I don't know. But somehow these presentations, in certain presentations, you know what happened afterwards. You get it. You understand it. And for that reason, it's just a little bit better. Regardless of what sort of contents of the presentation, the presentation just goes a little bit better, probably because these people are doing a few things. People are probably doing a few things you didn't really focus on, didn't really wasn't aware of, but it helped you follow the presentation and keep your attention throughout the presentation. So today you're going to find out about what those things are. What are the things you can do that really help a presentation work? That really help make your PowerPoint pop? Really make sure that you give your presentation all the way through, you're more aware of it, you're more engaged, you're more interested in it. It's just you get more involved in it and the audience gets more involved because the thing, little things you're doing to make sure you get and keep their attention and get and keep your own attention. Small things. Just ways you kind of bring things to attention, ways that you really get the audience involved, ways you can really transform a presentation. If you're aware of them, it's important to be aware of them. So as you're going through and you're doing presentations, after you start learning what these things are, think about your presentation. Are you using these things something you might want to use, something you haven't thought about before? 
Some of you sort of use them, but could use better. Think about it, because that's the whole thing about any presentation, to keep that audience attention all the way through. And if you understand these really basic things about a presentation, you should be able to keep your audience's attention all the way through your next presentation. And something that will help remember all these different points is they all begin with the letter T. Letter T. They're very simple, they're very easy, especially the first ones. Very simple. Very simple, very straightforward. And yet, many times people don't do it. And it creates a problem right from the beginning of your presentation. So you're giving a presentation, you don't use this first T right at the very beginning. It's a problem of the presentation. It just, it's just not quite there. Maybe you notice it, you go on, you try to kind of recover from it, you're not quite sure what, what's the matter. But maybe it's because this first T is missing, because the audience feels there's something not quite there. It's a simple thing to do, it's a powerful thing to do, it's a necessary thing to do. And the first T is simply touch. Touch. And the idea is very simple. Even before you say anything, even before you say anything, just touch. And that's what it means. If you can, touch the place in your presentation you're talking about. Just touch it. Now sometimes, of course, you may be dealing with this humongous 3,000 foot high screens. In that case, you really can't touch, but at least you can gesture in the way. Just gesture towards it. So that's a big deal. Just take a look at what you got and they, there it is. It's all right. Now, of course, saying, oh, you know, Tim G, you really ought to be facing the audience all the time. True, in general. But if you give it a presentation, what you really want to do is get your audience's attention focused on some part of your presentation, of your slide. And if you don't really focus on it, your audience won't focus on it. So a simple way to do that is to just touch it. Just reach out there and that's what I'm talking about. Just by doing that, that simple action of pointing to it and looking at it, all of a sudden, your audience's attention will be really, really focused on that area of your presentation. And that's the one time when you kind of turn over, it's like you're handing off the audience's focus on you, you're handing it off to that thing you're talking about. So it's like, okay, everybody's focused on me, fine. Now turn your attention to this point, which is And notice, when you touch, you don't say anything. You don't say anything. Because if you touch and talk at the same time, it doesn't work. So you, all you have to do is just... That's it. And most likely, you do that naturally. When you're going through a presentation, you're saying, okay, and over here we have. But what you probably do at the same time is you can blah, 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 blah. So you're just literally, you're talking to the screen. Not a good idea to talk to the screen. One thing, your voice is pointed the wrong way. Other thing, the screen doesn't care what you have to say. There's no point addressing the screen. However, you do want to change your audience's focus over to the screen. And that's why you touch. Okay. Great. You touch. Now the next thing you do, it's very crucial, very important, and that's something a lot of people forget about. Easy to forget about it. But it's an important thing to do. 
after you touch, great. But then there's something else you need to do because eventually you got to deal with that attention and make sure the attention's focused in the right place. That's why you really need to do this next thing. All right. You're given a presentation, and the first thing you've done is touch. In other words, you either physically touch the screen, or if you can't, you at least point it in some way. Or if you've got one of those laser pointers, you've directed that. Somehow you've indicated to your audience, hey, this is what I'm talking about. Change your focus from me over to that. Well, that's good. Great. But many, many presenters, when they touch, they make one fatal mistake. And because they make that mistake, they lose the attention of their audience, and sometimes they never get it back. Because after you touch, you need, you need to turn. Turn. In other words, turn back to the audience. So what some people will do is they get fascinated back there. They say, now as you see up in front of me, here we have this thing, and here we have this thing, and here's the other thing here, and I'm talking to this, and I keep talking to the presentation because I completely forgot my audience, they've forgotten me, they're looking at the screen, they have no idea why I'm up there, waving my hands around, they can't do two things at once, so they're staring at the screen and half listening to me, all because it didn't turn. Before they can hear me, you got to turn. Before they can hear you, you got to turn. So, touch, then turn. Touch, turn. It's that simple. And otherwise, you get stuck and you're talking to the wall. And maybe you've done this before. It's so easy to do. So easy to do. What people are usually have is people that are afraid of the silence. Maybe you've had this happen. You think, I don't want to have all that silence. I go up there and all of a sudden, you know, this is all very quiet and then i got to say something. So you talk, wall, wall, look at this and this thing is going on there and then that's happening. And you just go on and keep talking because <coughs> it's easier just to talk to the wall than than to actually really communicate and actually make that big turn. So once you get in that habit and you're talking like this all the time, you just stay like this. But sometimes you do that. Sometimes what happens instead is you talk a little bit to the wall. You say, now over here you see this number and this number in here, and that's what's going on there. And problem is, is that people can't do two things at once. Can't do two things at once. So while your audience is focused on that, they're really not hearing you. Partly it's hard to hear you because you're talking to the wall. Partly can't hear you just because you got two things at once going on. So touch, then turn. turn. They may be wondering, Tim, how the heck do I know when I'm turning? If I'm turning right or not, video yourself. It's really the only way I know for certain. Video yourself what you do. And you should see, you should see that. If instead you see, and you can see over here this thing and this thing and this thing going on. Uh, back here we have this and this. Okay, we have it. And that's what a lot of presenters do. Because they're not certain what the screen looks like or where things are positioned on the screen. So to make sure they're pointing, they're touching in the right area, they'll turn and then they just forget their audience. Because the screen is fascinating. It's this huge, giant thing that just takes over your presentation. So I said many times it's 30, 40 feet tall, it's ginormous. 
Bow down before the screen! When you touch and then turn, you're almost there. One more thing left to do. Well, you know there are three T's. And you know the first thing to do is to touch. When you're in a presentation, the first thing to do is to touch. It just means reach out and touch. Then you got to turn back your audience. That simple thing. Turn back your audience. So, probably about now you got a good idea of what the third T is. Maybe. If you don't, it's alright. But if you do, <laughs> you're ahead of the game. You're thinking. Because, of course, if you simply touch and turn, that's not going to make your presentation. There's one little more thing you got to do. Simple, but it's important not to forget it. And that is the third T of tell. Tell. That's really it. You turn and tell. Touch, turn, tell. And remember to tell. Because sometimes people when they're touching and turning, they start forgetting about saying stuff. Because they've been talking so much to the wall. Something like, you can see over here in diagram number three and diagram number four, we have this going on up here and it's over here. And then we also have this one and this one. And then over here we have this and this. In short, they ignore the audience. And maybe you've done this. It's simple to do. You get so used to talking to the screen, when you actually are facing the audience, you don't tell. Instead, you tell the screen. You're just like, well, here's part one, part two, and part three. We can see these things. And, uh, okay, and you see over here also, we got this and this and a big diagram here. And, okay, and we got this and this and this, and yeah. And way over here. And that happens because you're so afraid that if you look away from the screen and you keep your hand up, it'll be wrong. It's that paranoia. Oh man, what'll happen? I, I looked at the screen and my hand was in place, but if I turn and face the audience with my hand there, maybe someone will change the screen and I won't know it. Only way I can tell what's on the screen is if I'm looking at it all the time. Have you had that fear? Had that fear? Sure. It's normal fear. If you aren't looking at it, how do you know what's on it? So you look at it all the time. But here's the thing. You've got to put that fear away. And the simplest way to do that simply is video. Video, and you'll discover something very simple. That when you're controlling the screen, and you set it to the next slide, and then you don't hit any other slide button after that, and you point to the screen, touching, turning, even if you hold your hand in the same position, the slide won't automatically advance. As long as you know you're pointing in the right place, you'll be pointing in the right place when you turn and tell the audience what you're talking about. That takes a little bit of faith. It's a lot safer to think, oh, I'm just going to talk to the screen because then I see everything. See this, 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 I know where exactly where my hand is. But you don't need to do that. Video yourself a little bit and you'll find if you can just do this. You can see over here. Or you can do it this way. There are three important things to understand. And you'll see them on the slide here. As you can see, Those are the three things. Really keep those in mind. Because that's the thing about presentations. You don't need to repeat everything that's on the slide. If it's all on the slide, let people read it, give them time to read it, point it out, and then blank the slide and move on. That's another thing. If you aren't using the slide, blank the slide. Maybe you put it a little black slide so it just completely blanks that way or maybe you have a screen blanker automatically on your presentation thing but somehow you want to focus the attention back to you because it's about you the presenter 
Not about the slide. So remember, telling is the most important thing. You don't tell the screen, you tell the audience. And you keep that in mind, a lot better presentations. Presentations can be a challenge because your goal of presentation is to keep your audience's attention all the way through your presentation. But to keep these three T's you just heard about in mind, it will be simple for your next presentation. And the first T is to touch. Touch. And that just means get your hand out and point at the slide, the area where you want the audience to focus on. So you can say, hey, look over here. And touch the slide. Now, touch comes from the times when you actually you could touch it, when the slide was, the screen was of a reasonable size, you could just touch it and that's it. These days, touching may just mean you kind of point in its general direction. You may use one of those laser pointers up to you. Those things can get a little annoying sometimes too, but if you need to use one, okay. Somehow find a way to indicate what it is in the slide. That's all touching means. Just, that's it. That's what we're talking about, right there. Once the audience knows what's on the slide, where it is, then they can look at it. So that's all touches. Remember, it's about keeping the attention on the right thing. Sometimes with the audience is focused on the slide, sometimes the audience is focused on you. Sometimes it's about that PowerPoint presentation slides, it's about you. It's about getting that connection going back and forth. So, to make sure that happens, once you touch, turn. Turn. Turn back to face the audience. Otherwise, you start talking to the wall. Start talking up there. The problem about it are a couple problems. One problem is that you have to bounce your voice up the back wall to make sure that people can hear it. And that's hard to do. Sometimes for special effects when people try to talk to the walls, but in general it's not a good thing to do. And certainly talking to the slide isn't good. The other thing is it trains your audience to not pay attention to what you're saying. Audience can't do two things at once. So when they're looking at the slide, they're not really hearing what you're saying. They're focused on the slide. When you get in the slide and you're talking to the slide and you haven't turned, then all that attention is there. They haven't turned their attention back to you. And that means they're not really aware, not really focused, not really aware of what's going on. So you want to turn. Turn and face them. And then the final T, of course, is to tell. Tell. And turning and telling are kind of the same things. So if you don't turn, if you turn, you got to tell. But some people, they don't quite get there. They go talking a little bit. And then I talk to the wall a little bit, a little bit, hey, something's going on. Then go back and talk to the wall. And that's that paranoia. That you're afraid that if you aren't looking at the slide, maybe it's not going to show the right thing. If you point at it and you turn to face the audience, maybe someone will secretly move the slide and you won't be able to see it and you won't know what it is. That's just not true. The simplest thing you do is just video yourself. Or get somebody to video you talking. And you'll discover something. That when you turn back and face the audience after you've touched and turned, you can start telling because if somebody changes the slide, the slide will remain the same. You won't suddenly jump to something irrelevant. You'll be pointing the right direction because you just looked at it and made sure your hands were pointing the right direction. Made sure you were touching the right area of the slide. So then you can tell. And the reason that's important is because it Cues your audience to focus their attention back to you. Look at the slide. Aha, you got the slide. Now come back to me. A presentation, a slide presentation, always is a group presentation where you and the slide have your own opportunities. Here's about the slide. Now it's about me. About the slide, back to me. About the slide, back to me. You want to cue your audience when they should be focusing back on you. Because if your slide presentation is so thorough that you can just, you're repeating everything up there, you don't need you. Just send them to the deck and they can figure out the whole presentation on their own. They don't need you. If you're up there presenting, you want to add value and you want to cue them and say, okay, attention back to me. Now I'm talking, I'm turning you, I'm facing you, talking to you, so pay attention. 
Once you start doing this, you discover quickly that your presentations start to go better. You're more aware of the audience. The audience is more aware of you. That attention shift happens naturally and easily and simply. You get more confidence, more certainty when you go on stage. And when you're presenting and giving slide presentations, it's not as much of a big deal anymore. And you feel more engaged in the audience. It feels more conversational. You discover a new strength and confidence on the stage and you can use that strength and confidence out in your own world too as you go around the world and discover, yeah, it's okay, I know what I'm talking about, I can handle the stage, I can handle my life, I can handle some of those challenges out there. So when you're presenting, you want to keep your audience's attention. Remember the three T's of touch, turn, tell.